Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas, this is How to Make an RPG in Unity, and welcome to episode 23. So this time we are going to take a look at something called NavMesh. Now this is going to be our main focus of this episode, but depending on how far we get, explaining what we do and how we can use it, we may venture into a couple of other things. If not, we always have the next tutorial to deal with them. So to put it simply, NavMesh is a way of defining a certain area within your game where, in this case, we're going to use enemies, are able to walk and navigate to, let's say, a specific person, object, place. It can be anything you would like. So the basis of what we're going to do is, although we have some basic AI attached to our spider just here, we're going to use a different style of AI with this spider here, and I'm going to use this spider as our boss. So what I think we need to do is we need to firstly define the area where this spider is going to be allowed to walk. So I'm just going to take a moment just to um, play with the terrain a little more and just kind of make this area, uh, how can I put it, just able for the spider to walk around in. I, I don't want it to mad too crazy just a quick simple area so I'm just gonna expand this part of the terrain and just paint it it's a bit bumpy it's a bit crazy but obviously you guys don't need to worry about that at all so obviously you would take uh, the time to do so now I am going to use this specific area right here, but what I think I'm going to do first is actually lower or rather level out the terrain of here and move the water out of the way because I don't want things to kind of get in the way too much. So I'm going to zoom out, bring the water away a little. I still want the water to exist about there. And let's take the terrain. Now, we're going to start off, at least for now, with um, the actual terrain being a level height. But it's something we can always deal with later on. So, this whole area here is going to be where our spider boss can walk around. Now, the best way I've always found to use NavMesh is to use a separate object to define certain areas where he can walk. So in this case, we're going to use a cube. So game object, 3D object, cube. And we're going to use this cube as, think of it as a floor. So if we place it here and expand it to the size of the area where the spider is allowed to walk around. So we can change the scale on the X to about there. So it kind of fits quite nicely. And on the Z to, let's say, about there. And I'm going to zoom in. Is it maybe a little bit too big? Yeah, we'll just shrink it a little and move it this way. So now what we do is take our spider enemy, bring him up onto this platform here, let's say all the way over here. And now this is where the nav mesh comes in. Now to do this, we need to go to a window and we have plenty of options here, but the one we want is navigation. And this will open up a panel next to our inspector panel. So what we need to do is click the object, in this case, the area he's allowed to walk on and let's right click rename and let's call it spider boss walkable and what we need to do here is make the whole thing able to be walkable for the spider so if we click navigation static and make sure we have walkable in this box here if we then click on bake we can then click bake and what this will do is make this area walkable for this particular uh, enemy. But obviously when we get to the enemy, we just need to add in a couple of things for him or her, whatever it would be. So you can see here that it's kind of baked the entire area, or rather the terrain as it were, where it can and can't go 
already. So we don't necessarily have to use this particular uh, object. Uh, now, there's different things and different problems you'll come across throughout development of using NavMesh. Well, the basics is just that. And obviously, we can kind of you know, change it if we need to. But best way to do it is just do this for now. So what I think we're going to do from here is we will work with at least having this uh, spider. Let's click on it's better. Sorry, there we go. And we're just going to turn mesh renderer off there. So this is generally the area where we can walk. So what we'll do is let's attach to our spider here what we need. So add component and let's type in nav and we have a nav mesh agent. That's what we need on him. We're not going to worry about these details here for now because they can be used when we get down to testing out our AI here. So next thing we need to do is we need to create a script which will allow this spider to be controlled by whatever is in this nav mesh. So let's go to our scripts folder down here and let's go into AI scripts, right click, create, C sharp script and let's call this spider boss AI. Now, as I said, we're going to do this a bit differently the way the original Spider AI was done. And the reason we did that original Spider AI is because I'd like to show you a couple of different ways that you can create artificial intelligence. And you can then probably meld a couple of different ways together to create a different style that is more appropriate for your game. So what we need to do with this here is add in a namespace at the top using Unity Engine dot a i semicolon and the way we're going to do this is we're going to have a void start and void updates so we're going to use both of those so let's get rid of the uh, annotations we don't need them uh, we need to set a game object first off to say this is where the spider has to walk to so public game object and we'll just call it the destination semicolon. And the other one is going to be not public this time, is going to be uh, the nav mesh agent itself. So nav mesh agent, and I'm just going to call it the agent for namesake. So void start, what we have to do is reference the component that is the nav mesh agent that we have attached to our spider right here. So we need to reference this component and we do that by going the agent equals get component and in spiky brackets nav mesh agent open close bracket semicolon. So as soon as the script starts it makes this equal to that. It's as simple as that. And the best thing about this is all we really need to do is make the agent destination whatever we have as this game object. And that can be done with just one simple line. The agent dot set destination. And in brackets, what we do is we put this game object, which is the destination the destination dot transform dot position close bracket semicolon and save that script and now let's head back into unity hopefully we have no errors in the console perfect so drag and drop that spider boss script onto our spider right there and the destination, as I say, is going to be the game object. Now, I'm going to prove how this nav mesh agent works, uh, at least for now, uh, just by changing what we have here. So by default, we have walk, uh, sorry, attack as the main animation. But I would like to use walk as the uh, actual animation to use. So let's just change that to 
walk, which I believe is going to be that one, maybe. Let's, um, nope, we changed the wrong one there. So it could be that one. Yes, that's the right one. Sorry, some of these animations are named the same because we've got them from different places. So it could be a little bit of a pain sometimes to find the right animation if they're all named the same. So by default, our spider is now going to walk to whatever destination we now set. So game object, 3D object, cube. And if we zoom in to our floor, let's have the cube as there. So we want our spider to walk to this cube. So let's have uh, that renamed as spider boss destination. And now in principle, what you could do is what we did with the NPC that we worked on, where it changes destination. That's another way of creating um, AI yet again. So let's have this destination set in the spider. <clears throat> so let's bring him to there. And for time's sake, I'm going to bring our first person controller all the way over here. Let's bring him over to there and press play. And hopefully when we head over here, we can see it is actually moving, but the problem is the animation isn't playing as it should. So let's deal with that animation first. But you can see the idea of what's happening. Obviously this spider is having a bit of a problem but this is a bug that we can resolve. So now what we need to do, let's change this. Let's make sure we actually get the animation working correctly. So the walk animation, let's just make sure this is going to work correctly. What I think I'll do is I will hold control, press D to duplicate and get it out of the prefab. And I will have walk in there. And I'm gonna change the size to one and just have the walk animation for now. I think overcomplicating things may be a bit of a problem. So let's change that legacy and we want it to loop. So now let's press play and check if the walking is working correctly. Oh, we got attacked, sorry. <laughs> That's my fault. There we go. So we can see him walking just fine to the destination. Now the idea of what we need to do with a nav mesh is he will navigate certain objects and to do that we need to bake them to say they are non-navigationable or, or rather they can't go through them. So the idea of using this object saying they are non-walkable is where it comes into play now. I'm just going to use a couple of objects that we have previously used. So from the Mega Fantasy Prop Pack, let's bring in a couple of things. Uh, let's bring in a couple of boxes and make them much larger. So three by three by three. Uh, let's bring in maybe a wall of some kind. Let's have this one here. So if I bring this wall in here and put it right in front of the spider, and have it scale three by three by three. And why not duplicate that? So let's hold control, press D to duplicate, bring it this way to about there. And let's have another one about there. So now I'm just gonna attach some, um, sorry, physics and box collider. No need to attach a mesh collider. That would just be a bit daft at this point. Uh, let's bring the box to about there and let's add more physics box collider to that and all these objects now if we select them and it was wall there and go on to navigation <coughs> navigation static and let's change navigation area to not walkable go on to bake and click bake and it will do a quick think about it and it will take these objects right here and allow the spider to not walk through them. So it will kind of navigate around them, hence the term 
nav in the nav mesh. So you can see already that it is given a bit more space here between the objects themselves. You can see the green of the grass appearing again. So if we click back on Inspector and if we take our player, bring him a little bit closer so we can see this actually in action to there, press play. And if we head around this wall, we should be able to see that the spider has indeed navigated the mesh, the actual objects themselves. Obviously he's collided with them there because we need to add in a box collider for himself or just any collider. So let's go on add component, uh, physics, and I'm just going to add in a maybe just a box collider and see how that is. Uh, yeah, I just think we need to change that a little bit. Okay, so he already has a collider attached. Sorry, I didn't notice that to begin with. Um, so let's go on, where is it attached to? Sorry, just trying to find out what things are attached to this spider. So what, what I think I'm just gonna do, I'll just attach a, a new type unless we can, there we go. Just trying to find these things here and there, but this is where you can play around with the actual nav mesh settings themselves. And you can see kind of where it's uh, working from. Height doesn't matter too much. It's up to you how you want to work with it. But as long as you get the radius about right, maybe change the speed a little bit. So let's change the speed down to three. And let's press play again. And let's see how it reacts this time. It's all about playing around with the settings to see what you can get. So he's still kind of colliding with things, but it's... It's, it's how you can uh, work around it. Just make sure your colliders are kind of in place. Let's try increasing the radius to about there. Uh, height, let's, ha let's have it as three and see how he reacts this time. So it's all about playing around with the settings themselves. So he's still colliding with it. So we can always work around it. So that's just part of bugs, but you can see the idea of what is happening with this spider. So what I intend to do in the next episode is advance this a little bit further, iron out some of these bugs that we've been getting, and obviously if you guys want to try that first, by all means. But before we go anywhere, what I will quickly do to prove how we're gonna use this uh, AI to work properly is, rather than have this object set as its destination, let's have the first person controller as its destination. So now, as soon as we enter, let's say, this area, the spider's domain, he is going to come for us. So if we go down this way and turn around, he should be coming after us. And he is. And you can probably see him on the minimap. He's turning yet again to come after us. So this is how the AI is going to work for the nav mesh. So guys, until that next episode, thank you very much for watching.